Hello, friends. So AOC is out on the warpath defending her belief that the Trump administration is presiding over a system of concentration camps in the United States. She identifies them as existing on the southern border, but presumably they could be elsewhere because she's saying that immigration detention centers should now be regarded as concentration camps. And those centers are all over the country, not just in the southern border area. So there are a couple things to sort of unpack here. Number one, if you're going to invoke the term concentration camp, at least per the parlance of American political dialogue, you are just necessarily invoking the legacy of the Holocaust. Okay? Most people grow up learning about the Holocaust, and one of the central, central features of the Holocaust was concentration camps, later, yes, death camps, but the implication there is really hard to deny. If you want to address a phenomenon without being evocative of the Holocaust, probably what you do is use a term other than concentration camps. So, if that's not what she's intending to do, then you have to question what exactly is her intention. And this should be separated from the substance of whatever problems there legitimately are in the immigration system. There is a serious influx of migrants coming from the South, largely due to instability and destitution and severe hardship in Central America, whether it be Honduras, Guatemala, etc. So that's a real thing. And the conditions in which those individuals are housed is a subject of legitimate scrutiny. But can we best rationally address those problems by invoking the specter of the Holocaust? I think that is highly debatable, and I would say no. And in fact, Bernie Sanders, when asked about this on CNN, also stated that he does not use the term concentration camps to describe the problems that are existent in the area of the southern border or elsewhere having to do with the present issues involving immigration influxes. So unless you're going to argue that Bernie Sanders is somehow denying fascism or is enabling these Nazi-like abuses, then I think you have to at least concede that there are real problems in terms of the nomenclature being invoked by somebody like AOC. Okay? And it also doesn't mean that the right-wing criticisms of her, or at least like the neoconservative criticisms of her from people like Nick, uh, Liz Cheney are necessarily valid either. But these terms actually have real significance. And if you're in a position like AOC, where much of what you do involves political communication, then you can't act surprised or indignant when people take your rhetoric seriously. And here's an issue that I have in particular. AOC distributed a, an article that she claimed justified her use of the term Concentration camp. And yeah, concentration camps technically exist outside the context of the Nazi Holocaust. But when you invoke it kind of casually, just in an American political context, the Holocaust is what immediately comes to mind for most people who hear that term being espoused. But anyway, AOC put out this article that she says justifies her use of the term. And in that article... It explicitly elaborates that the network of immigration detention centers that AOC is now characterizing as concentration camps have existed for decades. They were more or less initiated in the 90s under Bill Clinton, and they were bolstered in subsequent administrations under Bush, under Obama, and now to a different degree under 
Trump, you can kind of quibble along the margins with which administration did exactly what in terms of building up or expanding this system of detention centers. But the fact remains, according to the article that AOC herself promulgated, that this system has been in existence for decades. So the question I would have to AOC then is, are you claiming that Bill Clinton and Barack Obama presided over a system of concentration camps and that everybody kind of looked the other way or didn't pay much attention just because they liked the current president or the president who was at that time in office? Because if so, what does that say about our country? Or are you suggesting that Trump has unique qualities which now made these immigration centers rightly characterized as concentration camps? When did they transform into something that was sort of -of run-of-the-mill, maybe had a lot of problems and abuses, but was kind of the ordinary machinery of the American state? When did they transform into something as incredibly egregious and disturbing and existentially threatening as concentration camps? Was it January 20th, 2017 by any chance? Because if so, that's really arbitrary. And that suggests that you are basing your rhetoric not on the substance of how these places are actually operated, but on who the figurehead is at the top. And that would suggest that your rhetoric actually is quite hollow and superficial and overly moralistic and intended to get a rise out of out of people emotionally. And that, I just have to object to on the merits. Now, if you're going to say that you believe that they've been concentration camps all along, okay, at least that's a consistent view. It still seems quite hyperbolic. But if you're going to argue that something just magically shifted overnight when Trump assumed office, that doesn't make sense either. Because look at some of this stuff that happened under Obama that, <coughs> at least according to the criteria that people are now alleging constitutes a concentration camp, the abuses that occurred under Obama would have been easily the same. So this person, Andy Grewal, who is a professor of law at the uh, University of Iowa, actually had a good thread today, which basically asked, when did the label concentration camp spring into existence? Similar as I questioned, did it happen to be on January 20th, 2017? Because if so, that's extremely arbitrary and actually reductive and insulting. So, for example, Grewal notes that the Obama administration argued successfully in 2016 that it could separate parents from their children in a Ninth Circuit case called Flores versus Lynch. Okay? <coughs> so, if your ground for asserting that what's going on now or it's what's what's gone on under Trump is this so-called family separation policy, then that's not a sufficient ground because it occurred under Obama, maybe in different uh, manifestations, but it occurred on some to some extent under the previous administration. Also under Obama, Greenwald notes, children were kept in cages so crowded they were, quote, forced to sleep standing up or not at all, so they had overcrowded conditions in Obama, uh, in the Obama administration. And the ACLU put out a study of uh, these immigration centers under Obama and concluded that they showed pervasive abuse and neglect, I'm quoting, of unaccompanied immigrant children detained by U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Okay, so it's not, I'm not just making a cheap, oh, but Obama did it point here. I'm saying that you have to have a consistent standard for when something magically becomes a concentration camp. And if it wasn't a concentration camp under your lights, under Obama, you have to explain why, and you can't ignore what happened in the very recent past. We're not talking about decades and decades ago. We're talking about 2015, all right? So... What's the story there? Because if you don't have a compelling explanation for the logical discrepancy, 
the reasonable inference is that you're just using this overheated rhetoric to almost fear monger, to uh, inflate a threat, to draw on the emotional impulses of the people who you are trying to egg on politically. And that's just not responsible rhetoric on the part of a politician. And sure, other politicians do it. AOC wouldn't be alone by any stretch. But it still is worth criticizing. And it's not to say that the Holocaust is like, has these supernatural qualities. I mean, there's always been a running debate in Holocaust um, interpretive kind of modes dating back to when it occurred uh, about whether the Holocaust was a unique event that stands alone historically or whether it could be properly analogized to other historical events past and present. And I'm not coming down one way or another on that debate. I'm simply stating that I think it should be obvious that if you're, if you're going to invoke the Holocaust, you better have your ducks in a row argumentatively. And it doesn't seem like AOC does. And she should be held to a high standard because she has a ton of influence. She can single-handedly drive news cycles. She has, the perhaps other than Trump, the most uh, powerful social media platform of any politician in the U.S. <coughs> so therefore, she has to, I mean, her words have to be analyzed. Um, I think some of the obsession with her, at least especially on the part of the right, is excessive. But nonetheless, this is the role she's in. Um, and, you know, on top of everything else, using this kind of histrionic rhetoric, I think, distracts from actually forging a rational inquiry of the real problems that exist. And just gets everyone into this very hysterical mode where they're claiming that everything going on right now in contemporary modern day America is just the same or is even meaningfully analogous to Germany in the late 1930s. It's just not true. And it's a distraction to engage on that level. We need to have a mental and political framework where we can engage with the real problems that do exist without necessarily resorting to these kinds of overheated and inaccurate historical comparisons that serve no purpose other than to gin up emotional reactivity. And that, unfortunately, I think was is what AOC did. And Bernie seems to agree because he explicitly stated that he does not use that terminology. So that is my little input on this situation for now. Um, I always forget to mention this, but please uh, give, consider giving on Patreon, Bitcoin, uh, PayPal. All that information is on the description box. Subscribe on YouTube here, please. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. I'm going to put out a new episode of the podcast that's going to be good either tonight or tomorrow morning. So be on the lookout for that, and I will talk to you later.